Okay, uh, we talked about this briefly, but uh, what's the relationship between the, the coupon rate and the yield to maturity, and how does that impact prices? Um, again, when bonds are first issued, um, typically, and, and this, this will always be the case, when bonds are first issued, if they're issued at par, the yield to maturity should equal the coupon rate, all right? So if that's the case, the yield to maturity should equal the coupon rate, then the par value uh, will be the bond price. So in this case, $1,000. If the yield to maturity exceeds the coupon rate, all right, which implies that since the issuance of the bond, interest rates have gone up, which implies that the yield to maturity has gone up, then the bond price will be less than the par value. So the another way to look at this is that $1,000 will be higher than the price of the bond. In other words, the, the price of the bond will be lower than 1,000 bucks. And anytime the price of a bond is below 1,000, as it is in this case, we call it a discount bond, all right? Vice versa, if interest rates have fallen, all right, which implies that the yield to maturity is now less than the coupon rate, then the bond price should exceed uh, 1,000. So in this case, if interest rates have fallen, the yield to maturity will be less than the coupon rate and the bond price will now go up. And since the bond price is trading above its par value, we call it a premium bond. All right, so I just wanna go over that real quick. Okay, um, and again, this was a, a graph that's in your presentation slides. It basically show you, shows you that um, for a 10-year bond with a fixed coupon rate of 8%, as we increase the yield to maturity, what happens to the bond price? Yeah, so again, as the interest rates increase, the, the bond price falls as the yield to maturity or the interest rate uh, drops to the left over here, uh, the bond prices are going up. Okay, so considering a bond with a 10% annual coupon rate, 15 years to maturity, and a par value of 1,000, the current price is 928.09. Will the yield to maturity be more or less than 10%? Well, the takeaway here is what? Look at the current price. The current price is trading below the par value of 1,000. So this would be a what type of bond? Any bond that trades below its par value is considered a discount bond. Now, when do we have a discount bond? That's typically when interest rates have increased, therefore the bond price has fallen relative to the par value. So again, we could manually calculate this, so we could have NIPV payment and future value. So it has 15 years to maturity. The interest rate is what we're solving for. Present value is a negative 928.09. The reason it's negative, because that's what you'd have to pay to buy this bond in the open market. The coupon rate is 10%. So to get the dollar coupon payment, we'll take the 10%, multiply it by 1,000, and we get 100. And again, if we hold this thing until it fully matures, we'll get 1,000 bucks back. Okay, so we have 15 for N. 928.09, negative for the present value, 100 for the payment, 1,000 for the future value, compute, I, and we get 11%. And that makes sense, right? Because interest rates have, they were 10% when they were first issued, because again, the yield to maturity and the, interest, and the coupon interest rate must be equal when they're first issued. But what's happened is that interest rates have gone from 10% up to 11%. So interest rates have gone up to the yield to maturity, which is the same thing as the interest rate, has gone up, and therefore bond prices have fallen. Okay. All right. Now, before we get to that problem, let's come back over here. 
And look at this. Example 7.1 suggests that if an ordinary bond has a coupon rate of 14%, then the owner will get a total of 140 bucks per year. But in this case, the 140 bucks will come in two separate payments of $70 each. The yield to maturity is quoted at 16% and the bond matures in seven years. Okay. Um, note that bond yields are typically quoted like APRs, in which the quoted rate is equal to the actual rate per period multiplied by the number of periods. Okay, so in this particular case, the bond is making payments on a what type of basis? Coupon interest payments are coming twice a year, so two payments per year. This is what we call a semi-annual bond. Truth be told, most bonds are semi-annual, especially corporate bonds. Corporate bonds are going to make semi-annual payments, all right? So how does this affect uh, the answer? Well, if you come over here, how many coupon payments are there going to be? Well, there are two coupon payments per year, and the bond is a seven-year bond. We will have 14 total coupon payments, all right? What is a semi-annual coupon payment itself? Well, it's paying 140 bucks per year, but to get the semi-annual payment, we have to divide that by two, and therefore it's paying 70 bucks each coupon or each semi-annual coupon. What is the semi-annual yield? Okay, well, to get the semi-annual yield, we'll take the yield to maturity, which is 16%, and divide it by two, and we get 8%. I'm sorry, that's my dog in the background squeaking his toy. So what is the bond price? So I would focus down here. How do we get 14? It was a seven year bond, yes, but there are two semi-annual periods in one year, so we end up getting 14 total uh, compounding periods. Again, the Yield to maturity was 16%, but this is a semi-annual bond. So we need to cut that yield to maturity in half. And so the interest rate should be eight. The coupon payment is 70. Again, it was 140 bucks per year, but we have to divide it by two because we're getting paid twice a year. So we're getting 70 bucks each period. That's where we're getting the 70 at. And then again, if we hold this thing until it matures, we'll get a thousand bucks back solving for the price we end up getting 917.56, okay? And that's how you would compute the price of a semi-annual bond.